Hello my friends, it's your good buddy Northwood Sloth here and today in this episode we're going to be playing some Borderlands 2 and we're going to be doing the Lord of the Rings Easter Egg. Let's see how we get on. Okay, so before we start guys, I'm just going to run through some real quick rules with you. These are universal, so they do uh, apply across all platforms, and there's no way around them, unfortunately. The first rule is that you must be in true Vault Hunter mode or Ultimate Vault Hunter mode, otherwise this won't work. You can't use the fast travel systems, you must walk the entirety of the journey. You cannot use any vehicles and you cannot die although you can enter fight for your life mode but if you die you have to restart the whole process again and just a little side note for you guys I have edited these, this video quite heavily purely because um, a lot of the journey is just walking from A to B and it didn't seem that entertaining so I've cut it down to the parts that I think you'll enjoy the most alright so here we are at Claptrap Shack now um, you can fast travel to this location that's not a problem at all once you're there just walk into the main room you'll see the fireplace here if you don't know where that is it's the central room uh, of the of Claptrap's home and you'll see that object pointing in there that's Geary's unbreakable gear now if you read it it says only a brisk walk to the Iridium bloke will reward the courier so you pick that up and then our journey begins so run out like I said you cannot use the fast travel points you do have to walk this entire the entirety of this journey all right so once you've defeated knuckle dragger and you've gone through to the southern shelf you'll come to the town of Liarsburg. this is a real quick part of the map thankfully all you need to do is just run through the town of Liarsburg, run up uh, to claptrap Grove, which if you've completed the story mode and unlocked the iridium blight will be located outside Liarsburg, not on top of captain Flynn's ship Get into the ship and then travel all the way to Three Horns Divide. Alright, so once in Three Horns Divide, you'll notice that there's quite a large pulling mon population. Now, you'll obviously have to get rid of those before you can continue on your journey. When I first did this playthrough, I was quite concerned because I was reading that you have to do the journey on foot, but I remembered that the bridge here was destroyed during the story missions. So I'm quite dubious as to how you'd actually do this part, but once you get around there, it's quite simple. There's a beam that's still attached from point A to point B. All you need to do is to jump onto that beam and then jump back across. So once you've made your way all the way around the map, you'll come to this sign here. It's the Three Memorial Dam. Uh, it's a dial sign. You'll need to run up to the exit point. This will take you into the Three Horns Valley. Okay, so as soon as you come into the next area, which is the Three Horns Valleys, you're going to get come under attack by a lot of scabs. What you can do about it is inevitable. Come to peace with it. Just kill the scags! Once that's done, all you need to do is run round just past the dam here in front of me. Uh, run round to your right and there'll be your exit point of the dust. Luckily, this is another really short part of this whole journey. It's quite a nice part of it. Again, the whole thing can start to become a bit tedious. But it's a really, really short one. Just get through the skags and you're there. <laughs> okay, so we are almost at the end of our journey. We're now in the dust. Now, this part becomes a bit more tricky. Now, remember what I said, you can't die, but you can go into fight for your life mode. The reason I'm saying it's a bit more tricky here is because the vehicles that are in this area can knock you straight into fight for your life mode without even damage. All they have to do is hit you with the cars, you're in fight for your life mode. If they drive off, that can become a problem. Luckily, when I did this, I was a level 50, uh, playing in true Vault Hunter mode, so they were a level 36 or a 37, so it wasn't too bad. But just be aware that you can try to stick close to walls and buildings where the vehicles can't nice. knock and go straight to fight for life. Ooh. 
if you're heading in the right direction, you'll come to these two giant pillars here. What you need to do is, this is a really simple part, there's no hidden bad guys or anything, you just run through here, around the corner, and then you're at the exit to the original light. Almost there, guys. Okay guys, so once you're in the Iridium Blight, you need to start making your way down. This is where it gets starts to get a bit more tricky. Now the enemies are more suited to your level, so for argument's sake, I was fighting level 49s and 50s. And it's a long way round the map. So be prepared for this. I'm playing as the Mechromancer, so I've got my Death Trap ready on hand, but it can get really, really, really tricky really fast. Now the moment on this part guys is pretty much follow the road, all you need to do is just keep walking along this road, it will take you over this bridge. Once there, if you take the path to the left, it will take you across a narrow footbridge, which will take you to the next area. And you can see here how my death traps help me out, there's quite a few sky hunters in the air. Not the biggest problem in the world at the best of times, but in large groups they can be, particularly when they're a much higher level, which they are here. Whereas all I've done now is I've just launched my death trap and I'm letting him deal with it all. Look out, boys! Okay, so once you've crossed the narrow footbridge uh, of lava, you just walk over here. As you can see at the start of this uh, clip here, there's a cotter bolt if you guys are interested. It will take you to this den. Now, normally, there are quite a few bandits here to fight. For some reason, they haven't spawned on me this time. And I can't seem to get through this doorway. Uh, there you are. Uh, but yeah, so you just fight through them. They can be quite tough. There's a lot of cool stick goliaths. There's a lot of normal goliaths. Wouldn't recommend using explosives, but if you're in the mood for that, why not? Let's see some Goliaths tango with each other. It's fun when you've done it. Okay, so just a short walk up this path, and you'll come to, when you look on your map, it will look like this, hopefully. Okay, so yeah, here's the map for you. Now, we want to get right to the very end of this gauntlet here. So I'm going to set a waypoint there for us. Now let's get going. So remember the rules: have to be true vault hunter or ultimate vault hunter. Can't die. Can't use the fast travel system and can't use any vehicles. So we'll run up the short path here. Now you can do it in cart mode. Unfortunately, only one player can pick up the uh, Gary's gear. So if you are doing cart mode when you get to this stage, I would recommend that the other person stays at the bottom of the mountain and the person who picks it up go up here just in case it plays up. So you'll see that there's quite a few sneaky little traps that the game set up for us. That little bridge there was missing a piece, so you jump over it, but it's quite well hidden. Here you'll just need to jump between the lava waterfalls, get a good running jump, otherwise you will fall into the lava. Now at this point the walls start to move. Now you can run if you stay on this path here, but if you don't and you're a little bit too clever for it, it will knock you straight into the lava. You got another running jump here. Now this lava that bubbled up here will hurt you if you're walking into it, and it is a percentage of your overall health. So it doesn't matter what level you are, it will still damage you quite bad. Now you come around the corner. This one's a bit more tricky. The lava you have to wait for it to sink down enough for you to get onto the pipe, just like so, and then jump over. Falling into lava will result in an instant death, unfortunately. Come around the corner. And you've got this plank, which looks quite simple, but again, the lava that's bouncing up will do a percentage damage. As you can see, I've got hit my shield there, and for a level 50, that was quite a lot of damage later. And this is gearing. Now, if done right, it'll hit me once like that, yeah, and he won't attack me. He'll just carry on running. And then jump into the ball of lava like this. Awesome. Now, uh, I don't know which direction, but it should have some... Ah, oh, here we go, here's some racks coming in. Now, the racks are designed to represent the eagles at the end of the film. Now, they've got three loot chests. Two of the loot chests will contain your basic uh, weapons. However, one of them will guarantee purple or e-tech weapons, similar to the chest in Sanctuary. Now I allowed Geary to jump into the pool and sacrifice himself, which meant that I got those three loot chests, but you do have a second option. That option is to kill uh, Geary before he jumps into the pool. If you do this, it will drop a head customization. Now you can keep doing this as many times as you want, there is no limit to the amount of times you can do it. And here are the head customizations available for each character. 
Finally guys, I just want to say a massive thank you for watching this video. It is always a pleasure for me to see that I am making some of you guys happy. Uh, leave me a like if you felt that this video was helpful and again leave me a comment on anything that you thought I can improve or anything you thought that was particularly good. I hope that I will keep your attention for the next episodes we do and out of all the videos on YouTube you chose to watch mine and for that I am truly grateful. Thank you very much guys.